Apostle Dr. Brooke Crawford invites you to their Bible study free conference. Call every Saturday from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. You can call 701-802-5485. It's access code 629-5500-POUND. Her ministry, the International Intercessory Covenant Prayer Ministry, prays for salvation, healing, and deliverance. Her book titled, The Church That Makes the Difference, will bless your hearts. Order your copy today, 323-717-0444. Greetings, greetings in the powerful, matchless name of Jesus. God bless you, and thank you for joining the program, The Authentic Word. Hallelujah. I am Apostle Dr. Brooke Crawford, and I am so honored to once again minister the Word of God to you, the real Word of God, the authentic Word. And you know, it doesn't matter what translation of the Bible you got, but you really need to get your Bible because you need to see it with your own eyes in the Word, what God is saying to you about the power that's inside of you, the power of His Word. His Word lives on the inside of you and I. If you are a son or daughter of God, wow, you've got the Word. You've got power. You got love, you got a sound mind, you got joy, you got peace. He said the only peace that is real peace, that's eternal peace, lasting peace, is that peace that lives on the inside of you. Peace comes from the inside. It doesn't come from the outside. And and you could only have peace when you got peace on the inside. So, you know, when the nations gather together to have a peace treaty, (laughs) hallelujah, that peace has to be inside of them for them to desire to really want to have peace. Don't you know you can't have peace, not lasting peace, not eternal peace, uh, or always without Jesus, because in him is peace. In him is the word, and his word is peace. His word is peace is joy. His word is love. His, the word is faith. And, and through that, the power of that supernatural spiritual substance. See, the Holy Ghost is supernatural spiritual substance. Hey, yeah, hallelujah, praise God. And so that, that power, that power, that's why I get so excited when I talk to you about him and about his word because it's so amazing if you really understand and you really want to understand it, he, he will give you that. He's your comforter. He's your teacher. He knows everything. He created everything. He's all knowledge, all wisdom. So anything you want to learn about science, anything you want to learn about education, anything you want to learn about galaxies and stars, anything you want to learn about the animals, the creatures that he made and created on the earth, on the planet. Look, anything you want to know about plants and trees and flowers, all of that, their names, wow, and the beauty of them and the colors. And, the, and not, don't forget the terrestrial and celestial heavens that he created and made, you know, with the stars, the moon, the sun. Wow, all of that was created with his mouth, the power of the word. So when you put the word in your mouth, yeah, hallelujah, praise God, you put that word in your mouth, you speak that word out loud, you confess that word, 
that word is going to go to work with all its power. What? Did you not hear what I said? That his word will go to work in all of its power when you put that word in your mouth. And so, wow. So right now, God is healing some people. He's healing several people right now. That healing power is going into you right now to heal you of that disease. That disease that's right here in the area of your digestive system, your esophagus, and you're having problems swallowing, you're having problems eating, and God said, no, you can eat, I have healed you. His power went into you right now, that healing power. So God is so good. He knows what we need before we ask him. And not only that, but he will reveal to you. He will let you see it in your spirit, what he is doing, what he is talking about. But you, you, you have to desire it. He just doesn't give it away just real easy, freely, just, uh, you know, oh, all you have to do is just say something and that's it. No, no, no. He wants you to be real with him. He wants you to be sincere with him. He wants you to be ready to make change in your life, in your soul, in your heart, and it cannot be done without the power of the word. And so I want to welcome you to the program, our Father our, and our Lord Jesus Christ said, peace be unto you today. He said, let my peace dwell in your heart. Let my peace take over your mind. You're not going to stress. You're not going to get frantic. You're not going to panic. You're going to put your trust in him. You're going to put your confidence in him. And so now let's just look at something here. And let me pray for you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come for to you now asking you to teach us how to receive your power, how to speak in the power of your word, how to allow the power of your word to operate in us, how to use it in a way that is fitting, that is going to bring prosperity, bring hope, bring faith, bring confidence, brings trust, brings protection, brings guidance to everyone that's listening to this program. And so I just thank you for this privilege and this opportunity once again, and we give you the glory and the praise for it and the thanksgiving. In Jesus' name I pray, Yeshua HaMashiach. Now, let me show you this, and we're still in the book of John. John is an amazing book. And we're still talking about the various things that the power of the word is and what it does and how it works and wow, how miraculous it is. And so let's look here now in verse, let's look at verse 20. Let's start in verse 25. You know, we, we left off last time on this series of the power of the word. We left off in verse 20 in this same chapter. John 14, verse 20. And so I just, I just wanted to um, read that to you again. And at that day, you shall know that I am in the Father. And what else? You in me. So if he's in the Father and we're in him, that means we're in the Father too. Because <laughs> his Father is our Father. Hallelujah. So he says, and I in you. So, wow, wonderful. Can't get any better. He's in us. All right, so let's jump down to verse 25. And these things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you, but the Comforter, the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, okay, who the Father has sent in his name, he shall teach you all things. Oh, wow, he's your teacher. He's, he, he's the one that brings all things to you. Hallelujah, and bring all things to your remembrance. He's the one that have you recall in your memory. Wow, 
what it is that he has taught you, what he has said, and how to operate in your power. And whatsoever I have said unto you, he's going to bring that to your memory. And here it is in verse 27. Peace, I leave you with peace. I leave with you my peace, and I give unto you. He says, I give you my peace. He's lead, he has left his peace with us. So when he was talking to his disciples and telling him them that, they, they were receiving it. But see, he's talking to his disciples right now, and they are receiving it. So he, he's giving you his peace today. He said, I've come to give you my peace. I come to give you comfort because... Many, many have been frantic and panicking and all the things that are being done in this world and killings and murders, sicknesses and deaths, wars going on. We need peace. We need peace. And so how are you going to get the peace in the midst of all of that turmoil and torture and misery and lack and poverty and sickness. Wow, how can you have peace in the middle of all of that chaos? The only way is through Jesus Christ. And he said, I leave with you. I leave with you my peace. Hallelujah. I give unto you, not as the world give, give I unto you, but let your heart, don't be troubled, don't be afraid, don't panic, don't freak out, because my peace, it's yours for the receiving. Receive the peace of Jesus. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that your Holy Spirit is received. That is your peace. That is your joy. That is your provision. That is your help. And when we call on your name, you said you, you will help us. Hallelujah. So that is the power of the word. Wow, the power of the word now. We're still going with that. Hallelujah. Okay, now let's look at, let's look at Romans chapter 10. And, you know, this is Apostle Paul talking to the Romans. And they were the ones that actually was used to crucify Jesus and take him to the cross. And he laid down his life willingly. All that he always does for us is just, oh, wow, it's abundant, overflow, more than enough. And, and in Romans chapter 10... We're going to look at verse 8. And he's talking about the word. Look at verse 8. He said, but what can you say? The word is near you. The word is right in your ears right now. The word has given you peace. The word is your peace. The word is your provision. The word is your healer. The word is your joy. The word is is who you can trust, who you can rely on, no matter what. No matter what's going on. And he said, the word is near you, even in your mouth. Oh, wow, the power of your mouth. Go back and watch my program on the authentic word called the power of the mouth. Wow, the power of your words. See, it's all got to do with how you're thinking. If you put the right things in your thinking, you're going to have the right outcome. You're going to have a successful outcome. You're going to have a peaceful outcome. You're going to have an outcome that's going to give, bring you comfort. You're going to be full of joy in spite of everything that you see going on around you and what's happening to your, your friends, your relatives, your church members, your, your people you work with, uh, where you go to school, 
whatever it is that you're doing in your life, what, how, however way, and you know when you go to God and ask God to show you what His provision is for you and where and how to do it, don't you know you can trust Him to show you the way? He's your teacher. He will show you the way. And so he said, the word even in your mouth and in your heart. See, because out of the mouth, your heart is going to speak. Whatever is in your heart, that's what's coming out of your mouth. So, <laughs> hallelujah. Praise be to God. So you want the right words to come out of your mouth. You want words to come out that's going to encourage, that's going to build you up, that's going to help you to walk the correct way. Don't neglect your spirit man. Your spirit man needs you to feed him. And what do you feed him with? You feed him with the word. And because now, when you do that, you've got power. <laughs> and that power, that power is in your mouth. It's what you say that determines what you shall receive. And so you're saying, I'm going to get that job. You're saying that, okay, Lord, is this the job you want me to have? He will make it clear. Is this the man you want me to marry? Is this the woman that is my wife? And when you don't hear anything many times, that's not the one. If you get silence from God, you know, God answers, even in his silence. Praise the Lord. And so when he is quiet, he wants you to think about what you're saying to him. Because he hears you very clearly. He always hears his children. He loves his children so much. And so he said that word of faith. So you're speaking to him in faith. And it's in your heart and what's coming out of your heart. See, if you put the right things in your heart, the right things are going to come out of your heart. And that is what? The word of faith, which we preach. It's the word of faith. So the faith that you have, that's the word. Hallelujah. And he expects us to exercise our faith. Because he said, without faith, it's impossible for you to please him. Why? Because everything he gives you, he gives it to you through your faith. Your faith healed you. Your faith delivered you out of that trouble. Your faith, when you went to court, you had the favor of God. That was your faith working. You know, the judge was supposed to give you 15 years and he only gave you two. That's your faith of God working. Jesus paid the price for whatever that sin was you did. And so he cut it short because he has an assignment in your life, and you're there for a reason, even if you go to prison. God had a powerful reason for you showing up there. Hallelujah! <laughs> Glory to God. Why? Because he wants you to get to the place where you're experiencing the abundant life. Wow, overflowing with more than enough. And so, look at verse 10. We're going to jump down to verse 10. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. And that is what righteousness is. When you believe the word of God, that is righteousness. Wow. See, now people thought righteousness is that you do everything perfect and you're every, everything right. Well, that can be a small part of it. But righteousness is when you believe the word of God and you operate in faith, knowing that you have received that righteousness. Praise the Lord. And so, righteousness and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So you have salvation because you confessed it with your mouth. You have whatever you say. And so that power, that belief, that understanding of that, that mouth confession is made unto many things. 
So how do we make things the same way Jesus does? We make them with our mouth. That is the first thing that an architect does. He says what he's going to make. And then he begins to sit down and he begins to take a pen, pencil, whatever, sketch, to begin to sketch out what did he say he's going to make. But we do things the same way, the way God does. He makes it with his mouth and then it will manifest. So when you say, I am saved and I am born again. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. What happens? The manifestation. Hey, yeah, glory to God. The manifestation starts to unfold. The manifestation starts to come out. You begin to see what it is he created with his mouth. And what's proof of that? The very first book of the Bible is proof of it. How do you be a son of God? You speak it. You make a confession. You say, I am saved. I am delivered. I am set free. If you're addicted, you're addicted to anything, any substance. What's the first beginning of getting free? You're going to believe that you're going to be freed. So you're going to say, Lord Jesus, free me from this addiction. I no longer want this. And you declare it and you decree it. I am free from this addiction. I am free. I'm cleansed from it. And you go and you seek out the other assistance that you would need to finish your process of what you made with your mouth. Hey, yeah, hallelujah. See, you got to get real. You can't be hypocritical. You know, some people say, oh, well, I'm ready to get rid of the drug. Well, you don't sound serious. Oh, just pray for me. Oh, no, you're not serious. You're not even serious about me praying for you. You know, when people say things so casually like that, and they know, you know, oh, you're going to do what they ask you to do. But when you do it in such a manner, see, you're, you're, your speech gives away what's really in your heart. What, what you say in your speech, it gives you away. It speaks the truth. As much as you may try to hide it, as much as you may try to cover it up, as much as you might try not to let anybody see that you're really not serious. <laughs> you know, you really don't care if they really pray for you or not. You just say it out of a habit or you just say it out of routine or you just say it because, well, maybe you, you're trying to become what you are not yet. So that's a start, yes, to an out. But you spoke it, but you're going to make that to be the truth. How is it that you're going to make it become the truth? by asking God, Lord, I want to change. I really want to be like you. I really want to become a real son of God. And you know, you're a son of God whether you're male or whether you're female. You're still a son of God. Hallelujah. Because you're in the image of God. He said, I created you just like me. And so we do things the way he does. The first thing we do when we make something, we, we talk it through. We talk it out. We speak it. We confess it. We say, okay, this is what I'm going to make. I'm going to build this house. This is how I'm going to build it. This is what I need. This is my material. You know, you count on the cost, what it's going to cost you. You know, you're getting everything prepared and ready. Hey, yeah! And what happens? And yet you got all of that and you never get started. 
you never put the first design on a piece of paper. You never discuss it with some people that can help you build your house. And so what do you need to do? You, you're going to start off in faith because there's nothing there. There's nothing visible. So how does the invisible become visible? You first have to say it. Hallelujah. Praise God. You first have to say it. The power of the word. And so the words, you want to make sure you're careful about those words that you're going to speak. Don't say, oh, that's going to take me too long. Oh, I'll never get it done. Oh, I haven't got the right kind of help. Oh, here we go again. They did the same thing to me they did before. See, all of that is stinking thinking, negative thinking. You're not using the power of your mouth, the power of the word. So repent and use the power of your mouth. The power of the word. Use the word and you're well on your way. So I want to remind you, don't forget my book, The Church That Makes the Difference. You need to order it now. God bless you. Bless the ministry with the book, The Church That, uh, 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 let them send you the book, The Church That Makes the Difference. It's in a donation to OCN or to the International Intercessory Covenant Prayer Ministry. And the address is on the screen and you can get it there. So God bless you. And I know that the word of God has ministered into your spirit most powerfully today. And so I'll see you next time on another part of the series, The Power of the Word. Shalom, shalom.